my new caps are in. You can get them with the red, blue, and black logo like this one in white, light gray, or gray. You can also get navy, black, red, and royal blue with a two-tone yellow and green, bright green logo, and I'll have one of those in a few days. So I can show you what that one's going to look like. But these are in. So if you want one, go to this website and get it ordered. Thanks. Well, what are we doing here? Got me some live oak acorn caps. I'm gonna put them in the toaster oven for a couple hours at 200 degrees and make sure they're dry. I've had these sitting in a hot water bath to make sure that I have the right temperature, or at least as close as I can. The directions for this stuff say everything's it's got to be stored at 75 degrees and the shop has to be 75 degrees. Well, the only way to get my shop to 75 degrees is waiting another couple of months and I don't want to do that. So I'm pushing the boundaries a little bit. It's about 71, 72 in here right now. Let's mix this up and see if I can go slow enough to not add a bunch of air. I've still got to mix them a little bit more because I'm going to put coloring in here. I don't want to use a whole lot of color. Okay, this is Jacquard Lemire Pearlescent Emerald. Oops, that was a little more than I wanted, I think. And I'm going to use just a little bit of this apple green mica, just a touch. The reason I'm only using a little bit of this stuff is because I want this to be relatively translucent. Looks good. Looks real good. Okay, got it out. Took a little bit of doing, but it came. It the, it was just so much suction under it. Okay, camera shut off on me again, and I don't know why. I've got it plugged in. This is going to be the top. This is going to be the bottom. It's uh, with that piece of juniper in there. I'm going to put a pedestal bottom on it. Uh, going to be a little box similar to the ones that that Doug Moore at Pole Barn Production makes simply because I like those so well that I actually had to buy one from him. I just think they look so cool. And with these acorn caps in there, I think it's gonna look pretty neat. There you could hear the chatter. That means I was getting a little bit of chip out in the resin. There's usually two reasons for that. One is you're not holding the tool at the right angle to get a good ribbon cut. Or two, you're pushing too hard or being a little too aggressive. It's all nice and round. Okay, I'll cut the back of this off just a little.
I'm almost happy with where I'm at. I think I need to take this down just a little bit more. I need to pull this back and cut a mortise, but I'm a skirt. I've got this thing held to a metal faceplate with turning tape and hot glue. So I should be okay. Let's see if we can drill this. Got the speed turned down. All right, here we go. And the tape came off. I'll do it the old fashioned way. The only problem with having two cameras and two lathes going is the fat boy forgets to turn one of the cameras on, as is the case here. I got the base drilled out with a mortise for my chuck. I turned it around, smoothed it back out again, and then I shaped this and cut this groove to part it off. Now I'll take this to the bandsaw, I'll part this off. This has a tenon cut on it so I can turn it around and finish this, the lid, once I get this hollowed and I can make this to fit. I'm going to take this to the bandsaw, cut it off, then bring it back over here, put it back on the lathe, and we can start hollowing this thing out. Even though it'll make it a little harder to sand, I'm not going to just leave a smooth groove in here. I'm going to cut me a bead. finish it up with the beading and parting tool. Most people just consider this a parting tool. It's a beading and parting tool. I'm a digging in. I've got a one little hole to fill there. So there was an air pocket in the thing, but just one. No holes over here that I can see. As you saw with the blue one, I didn't use pressure for it. And it didn't have these kind of voids even. I mean, I did two things with this that I didn't do with the blue the first time around. Thing one, I didn't warm the resin up. Thing two, I didn't put it under pressure. Both of those things I think have made a big difference. I love the way this is turning. I love the way this resin turns, period. And I'm really happy with it. That's all I'm gonna do today. My back's hurting. I had a busy day this morning working in the yard, of course. And I'll be back bright and early in the morning. We'll see if we can't get this baby finished up. Okay, let's drill out with the first bit. Okay, I'm gonna cut my my lip. I don't need more of a lip than that, and I'm going to take it about that thin. Because I'm lazy, <laughs> actually that has nothing to do with it. What it does have to do with is I bought this rig to use it, and it saves wear and tear on my body. More importantly, wear and tear on my nerves. <laughs> because hollowing can be a bit daunting. Let's hollow this piece down. I'm only turning about 700 RPM. got a couple of air bubbles in it. There's one inside that shell right there, or that cap right there. There's a little bitty tiny one at the crown of that cap. There's one in that cap, but that one will fill. I'll get the CA and fill these cracks, I mean these air bubbles, and when that's all ready I'll come back. That'll do. Clean this up out here real quick, and we can sand this baby.
my famous French's yellow mustard shellac sanding sealer. <clears throat> Now we wait for that to dry. I should have used a little more mica powder. You can just barely see some of it in there, but that's okay. I wanted it to be translucent. I didn't, I didn't want it to be real clear, but I didn't want it to be real opaque either. Time to flatten this edge off. Okay, that's about where I want it. I will finish shaping the bottom after I get it turned around and actually finish the bottom. I may want it a little bit shorter than that. Okay, let me get this off of here, set it aside, and we'll start working on the lid. That's pretty, pretty, pretty. piece of live oak world that's just about the right size. First thing I have to do is get this round. It's close. Close enough to work with.
and parting tool. my finial. It's going to look good on that lid. Now I'll drill a half inch hole in there and epoxy this in. Okay, let's smooth this off. Okay, now I need to make these the same. Right now, this sticks out a little further than this, than the lid does. So I need to make that match. That looks like it's a lot better. I wasn't thinking when I shot the finish on the outside of this thing that I was going to have to do that. I knew I was going to have to do it, but sometimes you just don't think. At least sometimes I just don't think. Now I need to do something just a little bit scary. If I had a brain, I'd take it out and play with it. If your tool catches on your tool rest, it leaves a bump in your work. So. I smoked that one in like pole barn. <laughs> I know you can't see that, but it looks good. You're gonna have to trust me. See? Looks good. Now, I'll shoot the finish on this, finish with the finish on the top, epoxy the finial into the top, and we'll be done. And I'll come back and show you the final piece. Yeah, I know. I had the finish on it. It was drying, but I wasn't happy with the shape. Not at all. It's just too, I don't know, blocky looking or something. Me being the perfectionist I am, I've got to do something about it. And somehow my finial got crooked, but I'll live with that if I have to. So here it is, all finished, nice and pretty and shiny. My logo burned into the bottom. I'm really, really happy with it. And I'm really happy with this resin uh, now that I've figured out how I can use it for casting. And I'm really happy with it for two reasons. One, it's significantly uh, less expensive than most of the others, and which is always a good thing anytime you can save money. If memory serves, it's at like $109 plus shipping for, for a two gallon kit. And, uh, and that ain't bad. Most of the other resins are $50 higher than that. So that's not a bad thing. That's reason number one. Reason number two is this stuff turns better than most resins that I've turned once you put it under pressure and you treat it right. Uh, like I said, lessons learned, number one. Warm it up. Use a hot water bath. 
get the red keep the get the resin really warm and and then mix it and pour it up and number two put it under pressure uh, it cures relatively quickly I had no thermal cracks in this one whatsoever which is always a good thing I didn't have to recast and do repours uh, to, to fill any of course it was part of the medium that I used too but I, I'm just I'm really really happy with it I'm very impressed I will be using this resin again I promise and I'm working with the manufacturer right now to try to get a discount code to you guys as well. We'll see where that goes. I'm still waiting to hear back from them on that. A little live oak burl finial on the top. Uh, I, I like how that turned out. I didn't break one for once. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm really, really happy with it. This is my St. Patrick's Day themed turning. I hope you like it because I really do. So thanks for watching, folks. I really, really appreciate it. Honestly, I, I, I really do. I never dreamed I'd pick up the number of subscribers that I've already got. And I really appreciate you, all of you. I really do. If you'd like to help support the Messy Studio in any way, you can go to my website, uh, link in the description below. You can buy uh, my turnings, such as this piece, others, uh, swag, t-shirts, caps, coffee mugs, you can click on my Amazon affiliate link. Uh, it's down below as well. Doesn't cost you any more. I just get a few pennies off for every sale. On my YouTube homepage, I have a PayPal donate button. You can do that if you wish. Every little bit helps, and I really appreciate it. And it helps me buy more resin. Yes, I'm not sponsored by resin companies, at least not yet. And all the resin that I've used, except for this uh, one gallon that Pro Marine sent me, I've paid for. So in order for me to do more resin projects, I need to buy more resin. And don't forget, you can go to the Axe Wood Paste website and enter the code BILLY10 to get each your 10% discount. Uh, Tom and Ann will get that right out to you. So thanks again, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I really do. Uh, and I appreciate you bearing with this old rambling fool. It's just, I spent too many years in the classroom and I can't shut up. <laughs> thanks again. Really, y'all come back. Hi, Are you having problems finding toilet paper due to this here current Cervacer virus scare? Well, have I got a deal for you. I got to meet this big old tow sack full of vintage toilet paper. Right here. And you can have some for a nominal fee. That's right. All you got to do is just text I want it to ID10T5. Thank you. Have a great day.